We've seen an example of a stack. Now it's time to see something that uses a queue in actual working code. And the example we're going to use for this is a breadth first search. Searching is something that we do a lot on computers and it turns out there are lots of different types of searches that are used uh, and lots of different kind of standard approaches. Two broad categories are what are called depth first searches which we will talk about later and breadth first searches which we're going to talk about here. So the idea of a breadth first search is that when you have different options for where you're going to go searching you try everything that is one step away from your current guess or location or whatever and then everything that's two steps away and three steps away and four steps away so you try everything that's kind of at a a similar depth in your search at the same time so it goes across the breadth of all possibilities a nice example of this is actually solving a maze. So we are going to add a new drawable type in here and we're going to call it draw maze. We're not going to add too much to this right now. It extends drawable. We have to pass it a drawing. So we should pass that in here. And all of our drawables have to have these methods actually those methods oh actually that's, that's right our drawable is currently a trait so blip, blip, blip. Now, drawing okay import the graphics context and now we just have the problem that we haven't implemented stuff we're going to we're going to need that properties panel at least a little bit of it so private var prop panel equals let's actually say that this is an option of scalafx.scene. dot node equals none and then I'm also going to take and define a maze now we're going to define this maze as an array of array of integers so kind of a grid of integers and I happen to have one made up here this one is 10 by 10 and the zeros are empty spaces that you can move through and the ones are walls and the idea is that we have some start location possibly here at 0 0 and some end location maybe here at 9 9 and we want to find the a in this case what breadth first search is good for is finding the shortest path if you wanted to find other things breadth first search wouldn't work so well but it's very good for finding the shortest path through here and uh, indeed that's where our queue comes in so we're going to start off by writing our shortest path and then we can focus on trying to make this more of a drawable and integrate it into our drawing program after we've gotten our breadth first search working so I want to write a breadth first search and what do I want this to return I think I'm actually going to make it so that this returns um, how about just the length of the shortest path through our maze? That's that's all. Well, except for display possible options, it's actually nice to have like the whole path. Okay, if we're going to do this for display options, we're going to display an option of list of int comma int, and the reason for that complexity there. So first, why option? Here, let me do that so this compiles. Why option? Well, it's possible there's not a path through the maze. You know, for example, if I took the zero and replaced it with a one, there would be no way to get to this bottom corner, and therefore we'd have to return none. The list is because I want to return all of the basically locations that are on the path. And the int int is because I need an, an x, y, or a row column for each location that is, uh, that's on 
the path that we go through. Now the thing about breadth first search is, and the reason we're using it here, is it uses a queue. So we're gonna make a new array queue and I want this array queue to hold solutions, you know, possible solutions, list of ints of ints, a list of int int. And we'll import our array queue. Okay, so we have this queue here. And to start off with, I am going to in queue a start location. For this or actually a list that has my start location well I could hard code that I'm going to start at 0 0 that would be a possibility here uh, it might be nice to actually have that as something that we could adjust later so how about we make a private var for start X comma start Y and set those both equal to 0 if we're putting starts up here, you can probably guess that we're going to need an end x and an end y, and at least right now both of those are going to be 9, the bottom corner. And so then this can become start x and start y. Okay. The way that this fundamentally works is it is going to continue looping while there's still stuff in the queue. So while not q dot is empty, we're going to keep doing work. We might find there's other things that we want to check for in there. Uh, what do we want to do inside of here? Well, if I am a, at a particular location in the maze, then I want to basically step to each of the four locations that are adjacent to uh, to where I am right now. Also, um, you know, I need to make sure that I don't go around in circles. Uh, and so I'm going to pull off right here the the list that is currently on our queue. So the head of this is a list of, actually I should probably use uh, pattern notation, x, y, cons with the rest of the list. And I'm going to pull that off of the DQ. Uh, it turns out I need the whole list though, and so I'm actually going to use a, a somewhat more advanced pattern here. So when you use the at symbol, this name becomes bound to the entire pattern after this. Uh, actually, in that case, it would probably become bound to the x, y. Let's put some parentheses there so we make sure that steps becomes a, a list. It's a cons of int, int. And so that pulls off the first element from the queue, which we know is not empty. The whole list is steps, and the x and y for the head, the first element at it, which is going to be our kind of current location on the path, is pulled off the queue. Now, now I need to step in four different directions. I could write the same code four times, but it turns out the code that I'm going to write is going to be reasonably complex. And for that reason, something that I often do is I am going to make a little array of what I call offsets. And actually, well, yeah, let's go with a vector because I, I'm never going to change these things. And these are the offsets for going up, right, down, and left. So how far do I move in x, y, uh, x and y for each of those? So when I move up, I don't move in x, and I move negative 1 in y. When I move to the right, I move 1 in x and 0 in y. When I move down, I move 0 in x and 1 in y. And when I move to the left, I move negative 1 in x and 0 in y. So I have four different values that are the offsets for where I would move for each of my four different directions. And the reason I like doing that is then I can move through the four of them in a single loop. So I can do something like this, dx dy in 
offsets. And that will try all of my different possibilities. Let's introduce some new variables. So if we move in that direction, our new x would be the current x plus dx, and our new y would be the current y plus dy. And then we need to check to see if that is valid. And this is actually going to be a pretty long if. If it is valid, then we would check to see if it's the solution. And if it's not, then we need to add stuff onto the queue. And so we wind up potentially adding all four of these onto the queue, and each one of them can add their neighbors onto the queue and so forth. That's the general approach of a breadth first search, is pull one item off the queue, add the next possibilities onto the queue. Pull the next item off the queue, add it, the next possibilities onto the queue. It's breadth first because the, the queue itself is FIFO, so the first things that go in are also the first things that come out. So every time we add a new possibility on there, it goes at the back of the queue and we don't take it off in a short order. So we're going to come back in the next video. We'll finish this up. We'll write this uh, conditional. We'll put some more logic inside of here and possibly adjust other things to make this work more nicely and potentially be more efficient.